Top five fishing boats on a budget. We are here at the 2022 Minneapolis International Boat Show. I'm here with Todd Larson of Bass Trail Guide Service. He has been fishing smaller boats like this for 30, 40 years professionally. If you need a tank of a boat, Hey everybody, I'm Captain Peterson. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you believe in continuous improvement, you love outdoor adventures with your friends, and you like cool gear, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. We have many more videos to come. I can't think of anybody on the planet that knows more about smaller fishing boats than this man right here. Mainly we run 16 and 18 foot boats where we fish anywhere from 15 horse all the way up to 75 horsepower boats. We're trying to figure out a boat like that hits the sweet spot. You don't have to spend a lot of money on a vehicle, a lot of money on uh, the trailers. You, most of these boats, if not all of them, are single axles. And I know they're gonna get the job done for now, but they're gonna last 30, 40 years. Lund Fury, it's a great boat. Here's some footage of me and Todd fishing out of his Lund Fury in Ely, Minnesota. What do you think specifically about the Lund Fury? I enjoy the Lund Fury. I have one, they're a light boat. Yeah, you can put a little there. bit less horsepower engine on them. Sometimes they're a little bit narrower, so sometimes in rougher weather, maybe added in the best boat. They're less than a thousand pounds, aren't they? They are, yep. Yep, yep. so whole boat package. One of the disadvantages I see with it is you're fishing with three bigger friends, yeah. Yeah, getting out of the hole. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to get on plane for about a mile. Right, right. <laughs> you know? So maybe stay off the smaller lakes with it. Yeah, you know, exactly. When you, when you got a load in there. The next boat we're talking about is that Lund Rebel. You really yeah. like that one. It is. It's four inches bigger than the Lund Fury. It has about an 80 pound weight difference. That four inches makes a big difference as far as, say, you have a little bit bigger family, your kids are getting a little bit older, maybe up in elementary school, so they weigh a little yeah. bit more, it can handle that. Um, it can run a 40 horse motor. And that makes a huge difference when you got three guys the size of us on the yeah. boat. But Michael Terry on the boat, he's probably about our size. That 25 just doesn't cut it. That 40. It 40 pushes you out of the hole. Yeah, it does. I fish up to four people in it, but it gets pretty tight with four yeah. people. I mean, you don't really want to fish more than three in Scott, too. You don't, right? Correct. Make sure to stick around to the end of this video so you can see the wild card, the boat that you didn't think should be on this list that's on this list because of its immense versatility. It's on our list is Lumacraft 165 Classic. Yeah, that's the boat I actually, I just bought one this summer. It's really cool because it's light. There's not a lot of stuff to maintain on it. It's all vinyl floor, so there's no space to get your hooks done. Wash it down, hose Wash it down. It down. Yeah. If it rains, Bugs. it doesn't pick up the weight. Carpeted floor boat, especially a smaller one, if it rains, you're gonna pick up 200 pounds of water yeah. just holding it in the carpet. And, and it could take days for it to dry. And mess around and get some water in there. It freezes, yeah. that's a bad day. Yep. Advantages of the carpet though is if you got the family. Quieter, yeah. It's quieter, yeah. the dogs don't slip on it. I'll carpet never own a carpeted boat again. Neither will I. If you're fishing hard out of it, you don't want nothing to do with carpet. Your crankbaits get stuck in it. It's you cut it out and then you got damaged boat. Come on. Next on our list is Grizzly Track. If you need a tank of a boat, it ain't gonna necessarily go that fast. You're gonna go in the rivers and there's stumps and swamps and it'll float in shallow water. You can put float pods. Check out my buddy's videos up here from Send It John Boats. He has all kind of mods on these boats. You know, they're just very versatile. For, for that niche and they did one of these deserves to be in this top five boat it's a modified v front yeah. so it does handle some waves put a, a decent sized motor on it to get you out of the hole yeah. the thing that's really cool is that you can use it for duck hunting yeah use it for exactly. fishing yeah. floating the mississippi you can river get a camo one and i've seen guys in modified v boats 10 miles offshore and i'm not saying i'm gonna do it every day but yep it'll do it the disadvantage of that is you don't have much gunnel height you know you're gonna if you're not real stable on your feet this is not the boat for you nope, not. if you're gonna be flat water lake fishing or with kids there's lots of deck space for the money, the G3 V150T. He rides a G3 boat for his charter company. 177. Yeah. I kind of fell in love with that boat. What do you think about that G3 150T model? It's a very nice boat. It's a little heavier than a couple of the other boats that we talked about. I wouldn't recommend running that one with a like a 25 or no, 30. Anymore. Yamaha makes some of the best outboard units in the world. So now they bought this boat company. I'm sure they're using the same total quality management and quality procedures to make these boats. Yeah. The Carolina Skip. You can get these in 14, 16, even 12 foot models. I know you used one for duck hunting, you were saying? We did. It was the most stable duck hunting boat I've ever been in. Yeah. It was heavy to haul yep. and, and get in and out. But once it was on the water, we could run six or seven guys in that boat, no problem. They are really heavy. They need a bigger outboard. They also are going to need a larger vehicle to tow them. They are flat, and when you get out in some waves, they will break your back. I really like the fact that it had open plan. Inside of it. Cool thing about them, you can walk from corner to corner and it's very, very stable. It is. So it's very popular. And I'm a big guy, that makes a big difference. It makes a huge difference. The maintenance on them, 
you know, it's fiberglass, you're going to get some dings and have to take care of it. But for a fiberglass boat, a Carolina skiff is about as bulletproof as they come. I'm a big fan of it. What about the storage on them, too? That's one of the downsides. Yeah, there is. That's, the, that's why this is kind of a wild card. I mean, they have some live wells. Sometimes they'll put a little cooler in the front of it and a little center console. But in a small boat like that, that center console takes up a lot of space. People do it. I just would rather have a, a bit of deep D cut through the waves. Correct, you know? yeah. You know, we're not trying to knock on these boats. No boat is perfect. You know, they've all got their pros and cons, and we're trying to share the, our experience with you so you can help make a good decision. I mean, these boats are, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 nowadays. Like, you should know these things that we know, and we just wanted to pass that on to you guys. It should be something that you have for a long time. Yeah, and yeah. Something you can even pass down to your children. Yeah. If you guys like this video and want to see us do in-depth reviews and on-the-water stuff with these boats, let us know in the comments below. More importantly, tell the manufacturers. If this video is everything you expected it to be, please check out the top five video that's on the link on your screen. I'm sure you'll like it. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.